Putin may just now realise he's that, that it's going to be harder for him to get his maximum demands uh, accepted. And I think you know the, the, the still the, the point that Prigozhin made a cutting criticism of the rationale for the war. He pointed out that it was fabricated, um, and that's true. I mean, the, those who follow these events and the and the origins. Uh, of the full-scale invasion, know that the, 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 the threat to the Russian-speaking people in, in the Donbass was exaggerated, uh, grossly exaggerated. So uh, Putin's uh, now uh, will, will carry on saying the same things as before, but he will have to say them knowing that, that, that they've been doubted by uh, a figure who was in the know. And we're delighted to be joined now by Sir Lawrence Friedman, who is Emeritus Professor of War Studies at King's College London. Uh, Sir Lawrence, welcome. Hi. Who do you th- what do you think in terms of the question? And a lot of people have been asking this today. Who has come out the winner from, from this? Prigozhin or Putin? Oh, neither. Um, I mean, Prigozhin is now finished as a political actor. Um, whether or not uh, he survives his exile in Belarus, we'll see. But I doubt if he'll stay in Belarus for long. I suspect he'll um, go to Africa or where his men have been involved quite a lot in the past. Um, And it'll be a bit like uh, Stalin after Trotsky uh, to see uh, if he he can stay ahead of those out to get him. But... uh, in practical terms, um, he's made his impact. He said things that are important. He's demonstrated Putin's weakness, but but uh, he's out of it now. He's, he's, he's for a while. Putin is definitely weakened. Um, he's uh, he, he, he promised all sorts of terrible things to the mutineers, um, and they're getting off. Barely a caution. Uh, so. Uh, He's shown himself to be weak. He, he relied on a sort of junior partner, Lukashenko of Belarus, to negotiate something. Um, there wasn't outpourings of support for him on the streets. Uh, it, it shows his isolation and his weakness, but he's still president. Um, and uh, that, uh, uh, and the, the, the question is more... How does this affect the next time a big moment is reached, say, because of the Ukrainian offensive, uh, rather than, I suspect, any immediate uh, immediate consequences? And what does this mean uh, for Russia in terms of trying to mobilise their army again to, 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 to fight the Ukrainians? And what will happen to a lot of these... Um, Wagner soldiers who who were important for for the Russians. Their leader, Prigozhin, was very critical of of the mission of, of the war. Do do they? What happens to them now? Do they go back and and fight for for Russia? What's the kind of morale going to be like in in the Russian side after all of this? Well, um, so the um, the ones who weren't involved in the mutiny, they're going to be offered contracts. By the Ministry of Defence, which uh, whether they'll take them up, we'll see. Um, but they're not bringing in the ones who did mutiny. So um, where are they going to go? Uh, will they stay as a coherent group? Will they just disperse? Will they cause mayhem in Russian society? A lot of the convicts that work for Wagner that actually survived the fighting and were released back into the community have gone back to their criminal ways. So. Um, it potentially a destabilizing force, uh, but I think the answers were it, it'll vary, and we're not really that sure what'll happen to um, a lot of the Wagner characters. And what do you think this does for Ukraine? Um, I think it, it it doesn't make a lot of difference in the short term. Um, they're in a tough fight. Uh, the problems they face are as much the result of minefields as anything else. There, uh, There's no evidence that the Russians are stopping fighting or anything like that. Um, they, they'll probably now face the same command that they faced before because uh, Prigozhin wanted the Russian command refreshed and replaced, and that's unlikely to happen now. So I don't think that will upset the Ukrainians because they don't have a lot of respect for it. Um, the issue, I think, comes if they do start to make success because... 
I would have thought Putin having shown um, that in the end, in a crisis, he will look for a negotiated way out. That will be a thought that's there in the future. So I think it, on balance, it makes some sort of negotiated outcome, presuming there's a basis for it, uh, more rather than less likely. Putin may just now realise that, that it's going to be harder for him to get his maximum demands uh, accepted. And I think, you know, the, 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 still, the, the point that Prigozhin made a cutting criticism of the rationale for the war. He pointed out that it was fabricated. Um, and that's true. I mean, the, those who follow these events and the and the origins uh, of the full scale invasion know that the the, the the threat to the Russian speaking people in, in the Donbass was exaggerated, um, grossly exaggerated. So uh, Putin's uh, now uh, will, will carry on saying the same things as before, but he will have to say them knowing that, that, that they've been doubted by uh, a figure who was in the know. Um, mm. And I think that, again, adds, adds to the pressure. And finally, of course, uh, is it wise to have so many of your troops in Ukraine rather than in Russia? Mm. Russia looks pretty defenseless in some ways at the moment because of the Ukraine, you know, the, the, the Russian uh, dissidents who, who moved into Belgorod, uh, as well as the fact that uh, Wagner's people could get so far without being interrupted. So um, I think there's another nagging question for, for Putin, which is that if he's committed everything to Ukraine, what does he do um, if there's more trouble in, in Russia? So I think it, it, it adds to the arguments uh, and the possibilities for bringing the war to a conclusion, but we're, we're, we're obviously not there yet. And a very, very quick final question um, from one of our listeners, um, Sir Lawrence, about the Wagner Group. It's quite an interesting question, saying, look, because they're uh, essentially mercenaries, d do we think uh, Putin paid them to retreat uh, from the attack on Moscow? And another question has come in saying, seen as they're guns for hire, could the other side hire them to fight? Um, I, I think a good question. I don't think uh, there's any evidence that the, the, they were bribed out of this. I think uh, Prigozhin is perfectly capable of out bribing Putin. Um, uh, I think the Ukrainians were not unhappy that this happened, clearly. Um, but I don't think the, these people would um, be natural supporters of Ukraine. However, one of the groups that did move into Belgorod, um, the, the sort of far-right nationalistic, anti-Putin uh, Russian units, did come out in support of Wagner. So there's there's a link there that um, the, the Putin and his people will be aware of, um, but I, 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 I suspect it's not going to go too far at the moment. You may find individual Wagner fighters moving to groups like that, I suppose mm. that's one possibility. Well, look, it's been absolutely fascinating speaking with you and getting uh, your thoughts and your insight. Thanks very much for your time. That's Sir Lawrence Friedman, Emeritus Professor of War Studies at King's College London. Well, coming